Good afternoon and welcome to the second annual Mental Health Affair. I am Miss Margaret, your MC for the, the afternoon. And we have a really special treat today. We have a panel of phenomenal women who are gonna be talking about their experiences with mental health and really the importance of you know talking about mental health in our community. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. And I'm gonna go ahead and introduce these ladies that I have here, starting to my left. We have Ms. Kamisha Johnson from Amani Counseling Consulting. We have Ms. Gigi Faison, did I say that right? Because I told her earlier, I was like, I'm gonna make sure I say this right, okay? <laughs> she is a best-selling author, writer, publisher, and a public speaker in the Twin Cities. We have Mrs. Essence Jones, the founder of Protect Your Crown Insight into Mental Health. We have Ms. Sierra Carter from Zen Ben. And last but not least, Ms. Shondell Darris from Her Zilliancy. So, I have a, uh, a few questions, and we may have time possibly for the audience to ask some questions as well. We'll see how we um, go here on time. But the first question that I have for you ladies is, what is mental health to you and or mental wellness? And we'll start off with whoever would like to start. gonna be fun. <laughs> mental health, mental wellness. Um, mental health for me, body, 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 mind, spirit. Um, I think all of those are interconnected. Um, making sure you're taking care of your, your mental health by whatever that looks like for you, whatever is in your, your mental health toolbox. Uh, spirituality is a big one for me. Meditation, journaling, um, being intentional with my parenting. Um, and I honor silence, because I have four children, so. <laughs> right. My mental health, you know, honoring that silence is a big one for me, so. Mental health is essential to my overall health, though. So, I wanna make sure I point that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, I would say uh, mental health, I mean, it makes me think of like your oral hygiene, like your oral health, right? Like, for that, we brush our teeth, you know, at least two times a day, at least I'm hoping so, that's the minimum for most people. <laughs> You know, we're taking care of our bodies, taking showers, but it's like the question that always comes to me is like, how are we taking care of our mental health? We have these daily habits for our teeth, for our hair, for our, you know, for our body, so that we can look presentable to the world, but what's happening on the inside? Are we taking care of our mental health, like having daily habits for that? And so that's just like one question that I always ask myself and that I like to ask to other people too. Um, it's about mental health, it's something you have to like actually do something for on a daily basis. And so I'll leave it at that and love to hear what the rest of you guys think about mental health. I think with mental, mental health, um, you guys hit it right on the nose. And I think a, a big part of that too is, is, is learning coping skills because we all go through stuff. We all go through a lot of stuff, especially us as women. You know, we're mothers, we're wives, we're girlfriends, we're business women, we're, you know, we, we're all these types of things, but we also have to provide a space to where we can fill our cups too. Because a lot of the time we will give everything to everybody else and only leave probably about that much, if that, for ourselves, and we have nothing left over. And so it's learning how to put yourself first at times and be okay with that. And don't be apologetic, don't be apologetic for that. Um, that's the most important, but learning those coping skills. And like you said, you know, we, we have all these habits to take care of ourselves physically, but what are we doing spiritually? What are we doing for our souls? What are we doing for our mind? And so it, 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 it's often mind bottling to me on how we are so quick to go to the ER, to urgent care, if something physically goes wrong with us, but then we shy away from taking care of our mind, going to a therapist, talking to somebody about how we're feeling, how our souls is feel, are feeling. So that's just something that I, I make it known that I do love my therapist. Yes. 
if it was not for my therapist, I, w- I wouldn't know where I would be. But I think that's that's the most important is just really taking care of yourself, um, mind, body, and spirit. You got a mic already. Go ahead. <laughs> um, for me, hello, okay. Um, for me, mental health is honoring the activity that happens in your, your mind and your brain um, and prioritizing the activity that happens. Um, so if it's a lot of chatter, prioritizing the chatter um, and just, again, tapping into spirit, um, tapping into your spiritual wisdom that you're given um, to kind of just use discernment to see what is for me and what's not for me. But mental health is just something holistically um, with, the, with regard to the activity in your mind. Good job. (laughs) Um, For me, mental health is very individualistic. It is whatever gets you up in the morning to meet that day, to meet that work, whatever it is. Um, I think that people sometimes get bogged down and try to put so many people in boxes, even within the mental health industry, that we were like, okay, you have to pray. Or you have to go to therapy. Or it's medication. Or it's yoga. Or it's... What we did earlier, bowl ringing. Yeah, why can't it be it, it all or or none of it? It's your choice. Yeah. So. Amen. That pretty much perfectly segues into my next question. I have what the question is here, but I have to remix the. So I'm gonna remix the question. <laughs> um, so my question to you all is, what I picked up a lot from was was being very intentional about mm-hmm. about your mental health and prioritizing and being unapologetic about it. How do you all juggle that? Because I know for me that's something that has always been kind of a challenge, is making sure that I'm putting that as a priority. How do you all juggle that and balance this, the things that you have going on in your daily life? So a long time ago, um, I don't even know what year it was, but a long time ago, um, I was working about seven days a week, and um, I was in a really bad place, and my family didn't re- notice or recognize it. I put on the mask, I went to work, I did um, took care of my children, I did my normal routine, but no one knew that I was like dying inside. And I was mothering from my bed and I was doing a lot of things from my bed. I would work every day and get right back in my bed. And so finally I had to get myself to a place where um, I stopped trying to find balance. Balance is just in my world is just not existent. Um, harmony. Harmony, I make it all work all together, but a balance, like a clear, like I'm only gonna do 50% of work, 50% home, that that doesn't work for my lifestyle. And so I created Harmony. Okay, so this week I'm gonna, but self-care every day. Self-care is a must. I get my me time every day. Um, I, I don't, ex- I try not to extend myself too thin. Um, and my no is a complete sentence. So I had to learn that. that. (laughs) Yes, like, no, I don't have no explanation for you. Um, So it's hard to say, oh, I got to juggle all this, because then you are focusing on trying to juggle all of it, and you're creating insanity. And so it's important to harmony, you know, divine timing, divine purpose, what I'm supposed to do will happen. What's for me will come to me. And so I try to just stay in that space. When I find myself saying, oh, I only got this hour for this and that, that's when I find chaos. So. I like that one. <laughs> I was totally listening to you, by the way, but uh, can you repeat the question? Sure. <laughs> it's okay, I was like beatboxing in the middle, so you might have missed something that I said. <laughs> but what I said was basically, how do you really um, kind of juggle making like what she was saying, you know, mental health and stuff and taking care of yourself, putting that in your schedule. How do you juggle that? How do you make sure you're getting that daily and to also stay on top of all the other things that you have going on? Mm-hmm. I gotta remix the question again, but. <laughs> no, thank you for that. Yeah, um, I would say two things for me, just real quick here. I know for me about seven years ago, I was in a relationship. It was only a six month relationship, but it was the first time that I was dating someone that I thought, for sure, this is my husband. This is the man that, you know, that I'm going to marry. And I never thought that about anybody. Like, I'm usually just like, oh, just passing time, okay, <laughs> you know. But this guy was like, he's the one. And the relationship ended, and it was nothing due to our relationship. It was mainly due to, like, parents and family and stuff like that, what they said. And, and he just wasn't able to stay in the relationship. But it was so devastating to me. Like, it broke me down. And it was the first man to tell me that he wanted to break up with me. So my ego was shot. 
you know? And so I went to a deep down kind of space. And so I called every single friend, like, what should I do, what should I do? And everybody was like trying to give me advice, but nothing felt healing to me. Like it all felt like just like more of like in the ego, you know? But I called my last friend who usually has the worst advice ever. <laughs> so that's why I called her at the last moment, but I called her and she actually had the most wisest advice to me. And she said, Gigi, this is not you, let it go. And it was like those three words, let it go, like gave me such healing. And like, it was like the moment like I got off the phone with her, it was almost like I received all these downloads that was like telling me to go into prayer, telling me to go into meditation, which I did. And I heard this download say to me that it said that you need to go into deep, you know, spiritual, like a spiritual boot camp, basically. Because it said to me basically that for the future, that I want you to be in a place where if somebody rejects you, that you don't reject yourself. And that the fact that you're in such pain because someone said this is ending, that you have such like, ugh, towards yourself, that means your spiritual like growth, there's like more to be done, you know? And so that gave me the, I guess the power in me to know the, the power of like having that spiritual daily practice. And so because of that one situation, as you said too, that you never take away your self-care, your self-care is number one. And so that became like my, everyone kind of has that moment where they kind of hit low, where they're like, I'm done. You know, that was my I'm done moment. Um, but to move forward from that in terms of scheduling everything else in my life, I look at it more like desires. Like what are my desires for this week that I want? Is it, um, do I want to feel honored? Do I want to feel joy? Do I want to feel more play in my life? And so I bring in little things like that to really connect me to the essence that I'm really wanting to feel, um, more so than like, you know, actual things that need to get done. And that makes me feel energetically balanced, so. I just want to add one thing. Isn't it interesting how through our lives one person can say something to you or one person could be the cause of something and it just totally rocks who you feel like you are in your life? Like so many times will be that, but everyone else can tell you positive things and it takes just one person that make you second guess yourself and you will carry that throughout your lives and your adult lives. So just kind of a re-emphasis on that daily practice of self-care, that, just that reminder of who you really are. So just essence. Well, and I, and I was going to say that knowing who you are, that kind of takes that, that deflects that a lot of the time because I know I've been there too. Um, just trying to really figure myself out and, you know, and thinking that I'm okay and then somebody does something or says something and then it's just like, oh, well, maybe I wasn't as great as I thought I was. And so really standing in your own truth and being okay with that is is the most important. But one of the things that, that Misha said, and this is something that you and I talked about a lot and something that I actually learned from her was when people say balance, it's really harmony because balance, <laughs> balancing it really just does not exist, you know. And and that and that is so true. And I'm learning that more and more each day in in my life. But I think one of the things that I always well, I won't say well, at least I try to do. I'm not, I'm not always good at it, and I'm okay with that. But is giving myself grace when I don't meet what I think my expectations are. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it's okay to stay at home and, and, and just sleep because your body is telling you something, mm -hmm. you know, or, or sometimes it's okay to say, you know what? I can't, I can't go to that, to that, that party today, or, you know, I know you're having an event today or what have you, but I'm not going to be able to make it and be okay with that. And those that are in your support system will truly understand. They and especially if they understand who you are and where you're coming from, because we've all been there. But just giving yourself grace, I think, is 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 the most important when you're trying to harmonize everything in your life. I'm gonna need you to remix the question again, <laughs> for sure. DJ Miss Margaret live on the beat. <laughs> so what I said was basically. But we kind of touched about it, but all of us have so much going on and, and rights. Like, how do you create that balance? You know, how do you juggle all that in keeping your self-care, your mental health first? How, how do you go about that? Um, for me, I show up um, authentic and I'm authentically aligned. So I know myself. I know my true self. I know what I'm capable of and I know um, I'm very much in, in tune with my higher self. So mm -hmm. I might not show up as my higher self in, in, tomorrow, um, but I still show up radically authentic. Um, and for me, that just takes away all the pressure that life gives you. So it's easier to find that balance. Um, 
and to honor duality in all of my personality because I have tons of different aspects of who I am for sure. Very complex individual, okay? Um, but yeah, I just show up authentic um, and I let God do his thing. I'm just a vessel, I'm a divine vessel out here. So I just show up every day and whatever flows comes, it happens. I, I honor it, bow down to it um, and keep it pushing. I'm probably gonna get a little more aggressive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, because for me, it's a life or death situation. Um, last year I had my first suicide attempt and that made me wake up and say, oh snap, like, Shondell, you need to start putting yourself first. Um, society, even your family, your friends sometimes tell you, oh, just support them, support your family. Not really asking, do you have the capacity to support them? Do you have the time to really show up for them? Um, Three of my really dope friends know that I will go MIA in a quick minute. <laughs> I need isolation, I need to recharge by myself, and then when I'm ready, I'll come back. Yeah. And I'm not afraid to take my time and my space. Yeah. I think the biggest thing I picked up from all of you all is that, that uh, the authentic, authenticity part of it and being authentic. And, and like you said, being, that, being able to be transparent with those and saying, I just gotta say no, I can't do this today. And those who support you will be okay. And that's something that I've realized now. Cause we have that fear a lot of times we wanna fulfill everyone else, but we then suppress what we need in our own feelings. So my next question for you all is, what does self care, we touched on it a little bit, but what does self care look like to you? Oh, I was told to start. <laughs> um, for me, self care looks like it's a variety of things. I could be turning up some trap music or I could be sitting at a park looking at the birds. Um, it's really diverse. I've really tried my hardest to, again, not, my, not put my healing in a box um, because I, I might miss something that really might, will set me free. So I'm very diverse. For me, self-care is showing up for myself um, because I am known, radically known, to show up for everyone else um, and neglect self. Um, so self-care to me is like when I show up and I honor myself and do whatever I want to do. So like you said, I mean, it might involve some trap music for sure. It might, yeah, always. It might involve tacos, you know? It might involve going to my girl's house and just crying. It might involve going in my car and just cruising for two hours, blasting some Nipsey, you know, whatever whatever makes me feel good. You know, I just show up for myself um, and honor the time to show up for myself because, again, it's so easy just to kind of neg neglect yourself, taking care of everyone else. So self-care is just like spending intentional time with yourself. For, yeah. I, I have to agree. I have to agree with it's it's really being just showing up for yourself, really. Um, a lot of the time what I like to do for my self-care though, it involves me unplugging from everything. Mm -hmm. Whether it's phone calls, social media, cause we all know that we sometimes get on, on the gram or we get on Facebook and we just start scrolling and we get lost in it. And so sometimes you just have to pull yourself away from it and just be there for yourself, period. So whether that's going outside, I mean, I have a seven-year-old son, so he always gives me something that I have to do. <laughs> so, you know, whether it's, Mom, let's go play basketball. They let's, you know, outside. he loves going outside. So, you know, it's one of those things. It's just just, just being still for a minute for me and unplugging are the, are the two biggest things that I try to do. Um, I would say, just to kind of piggyback what you said earlier about having grace for yourself. So for me, self-care, the foundation of self-care I guess it's really about loving yourself unconditionally, no matter how you are or how you're showing up. So regardless if that means I'm choosing to like, yeah, miss an event and lay in bed all day, and loving myself for that and not judging myself. Um, whether it's you know me deciding to go out with a couple girlfriends and you know maybe emotionally eat, you know, <laughs> to love myself through that and for that, you know. So that's like the foundation of self, I guess, self love, self care. Um, beyond that, I try to do things every single day that have me meet myself, like meet the truth of who I am, like meet the God inside of me. And so that, again, just is another foundation for my self-love. It gives me the capacity to hold myself in a much stronger, more powerful place. 
when that's my foundation. So instead of waking up in the morning and meeting the world, like online, like social media, who the world tells me who I am, like, you know, bump that, like I'm gonna meet who I actually am before I even go to, you know, my phone or online or on the TV or whatever. And so that is like a, a cradle, I feel like, of self-care. And of course, there's like a bunch of different practices that I do, but um, before even getting into all the practices, that's like the root of self-care for me. Um, I have to piggyback off of what Gigi said. Self-care to me is definitely showing self-love. Um, it's imperative. I have the disease of being everything to everybody and nobody is anything to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I, had to, I, I work on that daily. Um, and like I said, self-care every day and like my fellow um, sisters up here, um, that could be bumping trap music. That's a big one. Yeah, like it does something to your real. spirit. But but then I could turn around the next day and be listening to all gospel music. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. You know, yeah. so duality, duality. Mm -hmm. exactly. And so, um, but one of my big self care things is when I first wake up, you know, honoring and thanking the Creator for waking up, and then I go into positive affirmations for myself. Um, negative self-talk is real. <laughs> and if you do not um, talk to yourself, yourself will talk to you. That's, and it's, it sounds like schizophrenia and no disrespect, but it is real. You have to challenge that negative self-talk. So as a self-care ritual for myself, before the negative talk can even start, I wake up and say my positive affirmations. Mm -hmm. And that's just one of the tools. Like you said, there's so many things I do. I get massages, I go to meditation, I um, talk to my girlfriends, I cry to my girlfriends. Um, whatever I need to do in that moment, just to honor that space, honor and embrace the process, mm -hmm. and know that I will get through it. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a big thing for us, that we are always trying to get over it. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to work more so on getting through it. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. One of the things, Misha, what you just said as far as talking to yourself, there's something that I actually have on my computer at work. It's, it's, it's a meme from social media. It says, if you see me talking to myself, don't worry about it. I'm having a staff meeting. You have to have that internal positive self-talk with yourself or all the negative stuff. Maybe some somebody said from the day before, mm -hmm. you internalizing that and making it your own, not even know that's them projecting their stuff onto yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So I, it, it's important to self have self-talk, you know, positive self-talk, positive affirmations, and put it into your daily habits. I definitely love the kind of theme of really waking up and meeting yourself every day, you know, tapping into the person who you truly are. And most importantly, everyone, make sure you download trap music, okay? Trap music saves lives. <laughs> I know I told someone, some of y'all might have, I don't know if anyone saw me when I pulled up today, but I was in my car getting my little shirt. Me, my, me, my shoulders be, you be getting it, okay? And I, and I was like, oh, I gotta go MC, let me get out. But that's a part of my, my, my little self-care. So my last um, kind of question to you all is, you know, some of you I know more well than others, but what I love about all of you is I know that if I'm having just a terrible day, the days when I just really don't know how I'm gonna get out of a rut, I can slide into anyone's inbox <laughs> or text or whatever and just be like, girl, I think I've even said just one sentence to you, like my soul ain't right. I don't even know where to go with it, but my soul is not right. And it's, it's so important to have that support system and to have people that you know that you can go to who won't judge you or make you feel bad or tell you just to get over it or you know, you're just being crazy or what have you. So I wanted you all to talk about the importance of having you know, a sisterhood or having that support system and how it's really helped you all with this journey called life. Ooh, whoever whoever wants to start. <laughs> I think for me, mm, this is kind of, I still struggle with this, just to be transparent and honest um, in accepting my support system and even knowing who's truly in my support system. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with the people that are around me, it has everything with my internal work. Um, so for me, I think that it's really trusting the people who are in my circle who have been around me through the good, the bad, the ugly, and you know, who challenge me to show up even when I don't want to be the fantastic Shondell, but they still challenge me anyways and remind me of my power and who I am. Yesterday, this woman, we were having a really dope conversation, a spiritual conversation. I hung up the phone. I felt so refreshed. But in reality, sometimes we struggle in our friendship because it's like, where do we play our role? 
you know but for her yesterday her role was just to be a supportive sister to me and the once i really accepted that i was able to receive that gem and my day was fine yeah so that's true about roles yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I guess I'll, I'll kick it off <laughs> um or not kick it off you already kicked it off sorry <laughs> all right so I will tell you, and, and, I, and I agree with you, it is, it's a struggle because you don't know who's for you and who's not. You don't know, it, it, but when you, once you do understand the importance of knowing who to keep, who is actually replenishing your spirit and knowing who to let go, it, it's very, it's crystal clear. Like these women on this panel, you know, Misha has been in my life for almost what? A little over 20 years because her sister is my best friend. And so we've we've been like this for a long time. And so I know I can always call on her and I can always count on her if I am, am not doing well. I texted you the other day like, you know, I'm struggling. I'm having a hard time. I don't know how to balance. And so it's really finding those people who are replenishing you in a sense, who are who are. Um, loving on you as much as possible, but then they can also tell you the truth. Yeah, that's, yeah. They can also tell you the truth when, you know what, girl, you, you messing up right now. You need to get it together. That's what you need. I don't want somebody that's going to sugarcoat stuff for me. I need somebody who's going to be transparent and honest about how they feel about maybe my actions or maybe I am not showing up as my best self. So, so that honesty and transparency is so important. Um, so I call my group of support my tribe. Um, and with tribe, I always think of just as long as the energy is reciprocated, that it's real. Um, again, like Misha said, we show up as empaths in general and just people with amazing hearts. Um, we show up and we give so much to people, but then often we feel like when we're in need of something, no one comes to fill our own cup. So what, it took me a really long time to discern who was supposed to be around because I'm like, everybody's around. I wanna lift, uplift everyone. I can, see, I can see your potential more than you can see it yourself. Um, so I had to take a moment to just honor when I do go through crisis, personal crisis, or I do have a really hard day, who can I lean on? Um, and who, and when I lean on them, who shows up for me and who fills my cup? Um, and I am blessed to have an amazing tribe. Um, and it every day, I mean, we get tested and there's things that happen where you're like, all right, maybe that <laughs> the season's done with this person, you know what I mean? But at the same time, it's just like, who's reciprocating that same energy? Um, and if you're not reciprocating the energy, your girl gotta go, okay? Mm -hmm. Quick to say deuce, deuce. Um, but yeah, I, I honor that. And it is good to have friends for different things, you know? So like, I know for sure if I need like, someone to tell me like it is on a big sister level, not in judgment, I can call Misha and be like, yo, okay, this is happening. I don't know what to do. Your girl's going through it. Um, and she, she, meets me where, she meets me where I'm at. Uh, and I honor that because again, if she needs me, I show up for her. And if I need her, she shows up for me. There's never been a question about that. Um, and sometimes the enemy tries to come with anybody in a relationship and tries to kind of like make you overthink it. But again, it's important that you tap into the wisdom that you do have um, to identify who is supposed to be around for sure. Yeah, for me growing up, <clears throat> I remember growing up having, having a lot of friends but never really feeling like they really saw me, that we really had space to really connect. You know, it was very surface level, you know, growing up. And I remember there was a time where I was like, I need a therapist. I, I just need someone that I can talk to. And it just, you know, with the stigma around that, that just wasn't available to me at that age. And so I grew up kind of in this, like, false sense of friendship. And then when I went into college and I ended up having my son uh, when I was 21 years old, and because of that, I ended up moving into a program called the Jeremiah Program, which is uh, for single moms who are finishing their college degree, who have children under five years old. And walking into that program, to me, that that was like the birth of sisterhood for me. That's where I found my sisters. Um, my sisters who saw me, you know, who completely were able to like be transparent and be real with me, you know, be like the tough sister to me, be there to go out and hang out with me, be there to cry with me. I mean, all of that and above. And for me, that was the first space that I had to really understand what it means to have a real friendship is to be vulnerable and to be seen, to allow yourself to be seen and to also see the other person and to show up for them and hold space for them. So that was like my powerful like training ground for like creating sisterhood in my life. And even after that, like those women, they're gonna be with, we're gonna be in nursing homes together. <laughs> we already know. 
Um, but I've been able to like collect even more women on our sisterhood um, tribe, as you called it, um, since then. And you know, women who are able to create intentional spaces for you, and women who are able to see all of you, not just the happy you, not just the you that can like party like this you, but like every single part of you, as you said, you know, there's so many pieces to me. Like I'm not just this one person, right? There's so many parts of me. And the women that have showed up in that circle have been able to hold space for all of you. But I do have something to share for those who don't have, not everyone has sisterhood. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has friends that they can, you know, as we're talking about that and like, yeah, we got our girlfriends. That it can be really hard um, and challenging finding authentic friendship. Um, and for those who are having a hard time, I just recommend going to spaces where there is like intentionality mm -hmm. and there is vulnerability, whether it's a, a healing session at a new yoga studio that's happening. Just try to at least allow yourself to go to places like that more often than you, even if you're a little intimidated at first, um, but to open yourself up and to be able to open yourself up to receive, to start to just even energetically feel like you can receive love. You know, that's just one quick kind of tip because I do want to honor those that don't quite have sisterhood right now. Mm -hmm. uh, ditto to everyone. Um, <laughs> something that, sorry, Shondell, got to be put on the spot a little bit. That's cool. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm transparent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually the one always going to everybody else when they need support. So for the longest, I bottled everything in me and kept it inside and as we saw, you know, there was a lot of things that showed up because I was internalizing a lot of things and not having, ha having healthy processes to take care of my self-care and to show self-love. And so there's, a, there's this one in particular time I was going through something, but I wasn't really saying much. And I think Shondell caught on to it real, real tough. She's good at that. <laughs> and so I was just like, I, ain't, I don't want to talk to nobody. I'm just going to deal with this. And I'm, um, the, I don't mind is the devil's play playground because I was just in my head just just not being very nice to myself. And Shondell just came to my house and she just shared in that space with me mm -hmm. until I got out of it. She was just an active listener. She was showing me love. She was giving me words of advice and I was at the receiving end. Mm -hmm. and, that, I, and I'm not just saying it's just her. Each one of these women have done that for me. Um, there's been times where they see, I, I, I'm a woman of many hats. So I'm always doing a lot of things and you'll look up and I'm like, I, I miss my self care today. Or they'll notice, like, mm, Misha's not herself. And they check in. Like, they really pour into me. And for years, I had a lot of energy leeches and vampires around me. They was just, I, I, I'm a healing. I'm a light. And so those types of people just attach onto you and, and suck you dry. But within the last couple of years, and I just really feel like being discerned and really paying attention to who my tribe is, it looks a lot different than how it used to. Mm -hmm. And the tribe that I have now, I mean, I can just have a vision in my head and they're like, okay, how are we gonna get it done? Yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I ain't ready. No, are you ready? Wait, Essence? Mm -hmm. that, that's why we are here today. Because that's how I, I got just, looped into this. <laughs> yes, I just spoke of a vision and she made it. How are we gonna do it? How are we gonna, get, how are we gonna make it happen? And so those are the type of powerhouses that I want around me <laughs> that feed into me. And I am very discerned in that because I ask from that, from God, the universe, creator, whatever you, whatever source is for you. And he provided that to me. And like these women, I mean, it doesn't matter day or night. If I need them to show up, they will. And I feel comfortable and confident in being transparent and vulnerable with them and knowing that they are not judging me. And they see me as who Kamisha truly is. And they want me to be my most authentic authentic and highest self and I just love them all for that Gigi's new to the tribe I love you too <laughs> but we show up for each other um, unapologetically and if we got to have tough conversations we're gonna do that but people always think conflict is such a bad thing like it, it is a bad thing but if you lean into it and say you know what put that ego down you know what it's not oh I'm agree to disagree no you know what honestly I'm right and you right mm -hmm. Because I have my life's truth and you have yours. And we can still love and, and, and coexist with each other mm -hmm. and just have two different perspectives. And that's okay. Yeah. So you can't be a, uh, in, in good supporting. It can't be just all me giving you everything. And like Sierra said, it has to be reciprocation. Mm -hmm. It has to be um, a, a give and take. Yeah. Yeah, 
I think it's also important to state that it your support system may not be in your immediate family. Mm-hmm. I call all these beautiful women my sisters, but my blood does not run through them. And they have given me so much un... <sighs> just Don't you to, do it. Okay, I won't. The tribe is with you. <laughs> <laughs> they give me so much grace, encouragement, and empowerment that I probably wouldn't be the woman I am today. Because even today, I'm different than what I was six months just by the support that these women have shown up for me. Any speaking engagement, any personal issue, any professional issue that I have, they're all there, like she said, supporting us. Um, But I think it's important to look outside of your immediate family to find that support too. Mm -hmm. Well, just to kind of, in closing, to wrap everything up and to kind of piggyback off what you all have been saying. One thing I had to realize just over the past couple months is that if there are people who you cannot be vulnerable with, if you cannot feel like you can openly cry to them or express your, their feelings, they're not your friends. You know, and I had to realize I had people around me who just wanted me to show because they wanted me to do my little shoulder movements and have a good time. But when I, when I cried to them, they, oh, well, don't get mad. Oh, well, don't like Margaret. And I, I found myself suppressing my feelings, make everybody else comfortable. And I, but then I was one alone crying. I was the one, you know, suffering because of it. I had, and, it, and it's not easy to find that support system. It can be very hurtful when people you think have been supportive or your friends. It's, it's hard to let that go. But then when I let that go, a lot of people came back in my life who I had maybe unintentionally pushed away who would show up for me. And I am fortunate to have, you know, a mother and people in my family who have been very supportive of dealing with mental health and and doing their own research behind it, but I also had to learn to be patient with them because it's not necessarily fair if I'm also not being vulnerable and honest and giving them that education of what I'm going to so that they can show up. So a lot of times it is also that that two-way street, and so it's just, it is extremely, it's, it's a part of survival to have a support system and a sisterhood. So I thank all of you ladies for being up here and being so transparent um, with your journey and, and, and being just really open and honest to everything you're going through. And I really appreciate all just for what you all have done in my life, whether it's just watching you all, the conversations that you've had. Um, so if you can give it up one more time for these ladies up here for our panel today. How do you all go about getting that friendship when you don't have that support system? Um, for me, I am a huge fan, um, and I preach, a, I preach, talk a lot about um, people showing up in the community. It's all about surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals. So um, the, the biggest thing that I could tell you is to do some self-reflection and f- try to figure out what you're into, try to figure out where you're going, try to figure out where you're at in life right now, and then you start looking, like actively pursuing opportunities that um, align with what that is. So if you are into baking, brownies okay there might be a brownie Mm -hmm. conference next month okay and you might meet your best friend there and y'all make the best y'all might even open up a business together okay making brownies so it's it's really about self-reflecting and honoring where you are but then also i mean yeah it starts with self so you have to obviously call out to the universe what you what you're looking for um and get grounded in that and then it will come to you you attract what you give out for sure just to kind of piggyback off of that, sometimes I also feel that you need to put yourself in spaces that you're uncomfortable in, mm-hmm. um, outside of your comfort zone, being around people that don't look like you, um, don't have the same life experiences as you. I mean, some of my closest friends don't look like me at all, but they are part of my tribe. And so sometimes you do have to look outside of what you are um, used to or what your family has made you accustomed to. I think giving yourself permission to heal, Um, giving yourself permission to be vulnerable and open and know that one, your story probably isn't a a new thing. Um, And know that by you sharing your light, as my beautiful sister always says, um, you give others others, um, permission to do so as well. So sometimes you have to be that, that vulnerable person to get that help that you need. I know for me, going to expos like this helped me a lot. <laughs> That's really how I built a lot of kind of that sisterhood, a lot of those people I now consider my village, because going to those like-minded events, everyone there is showing up on the same page. So everyone here is open and willing to talk about healing, wanting to help each other heal, and that helped me a lot. I know we have a question um, right over here.
had the people around you to recognize that that person is currently vulnerable. Mm. Um, what is your advice for that? Because we can't change that culture. That culture needs to change. Mm. That recognition is important. Yeah. So, oh, did you hear that? I'm just going to repeat the question. So, what do you do or what do, advice do you have as far as for having those people around you that can recognize that? Like, you, know, you were talking about being able to recognize something's going on with Misha. You know, let me say Kamisha. <laughs> Since we're recording the government name, Kamisha. Right, yeah. Like she said, if I'm hiding somewhere, who finds me? It's a really, really good question. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, I don't hide. Um, so last year, no, we're in 2019. So the end of 2017, I was diagnosed with anxiety. I didn't know what that was. I didn't know that was a mental health issue. When people said mental health, I thought it was somebody talking to themselves down the street. Like, I didn't know, yeah, what was going on. Um, I had to advocate for my own mental health. I had to advocate for my own healing, um, even to people who were diagnosed with mental health issues as well. Um, so me going through that process helped me understand that I have to advocate for myself. Um, I need some time, I need some space. No, I'm not doing that, and let it be my complete sentence. Um, but also not really caring what anybody else has to say or think. Um, this is my process, this is my journey, and I'm gonna do what I need to do to make sure to get through it healthy um, and positive. So I think the best advice I could personally give you is tell them just to show up regardless of what's gonna be said, because either way it's gonna be said. I think a big thing too, especially in um, people of color, minorities, um, we brush mental health under the rug. We act like we don't see them. Um, and that's a problem, that's a stigma. That's the reason why um, suicide amongst African Americans is on the rise. Because, and it's like third, no, yeah, suicide is like third, and, and young people between the ages of 15 and 24, it's like third for causes of death. Um, and it is not being scared to say, hey, what's up? How, how, are, how are you doing? When they say, oh, I'm okay. No, how's your soul doing? Mm -hmm. Like having those real uncomfortable conversations and you have to be willing to receive what they're going to say. They might come to you and say, I'm hearing voices. And you have to be non-judgmental and go with them to the resources so they can get help. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, especially amongst us black folks, oh, that's just our crazy cousin. He's yeah. just over there. Don't know about, don't pay him no mind. Um, and that's just not right. We, we can't keep doing that. That's not taking care of our family and, and the, uh, definitely the, the people in our family. So it's um, not being scared to ask those uncomfortable conversations when you, when you see a, a loved one struggling. I know there's been times I have a cousin that lives with schizophrenia and um, I had to go get him and take him to the hospital. Actually, I had to have Bianca <laughs> take him to the hospital. And Bianca was terrified. And she's like, sis, I don't know what, listen, this is what you say. <laughs> and I told her exactly what to say to them and we got him admitted. And, uh, and he got the treatment and he's doing so much better, but it was because I wasn't scared. Um, but that's a lot of times, we don't wanna deal with other people's stuff. We don't, we don't wanna help them. And, and that's just not, if we blood, if we family, regardless blood or not, um, I'm gonna show up for you whether it is tough, I mean, I'm just, but that's just me. Um, but the moral of it is when so, you see somebody struggling, don't turn a blind eye because you might be that one person that saves their life because you don't know, they may be thinking about taking their life. Not only that, but I would also say get educated. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, there, there are a lot of people who are unfamiliar with a lot of diagnosis uh, as far as when it comes to mental illness and what it looks like. Um, but there are so many great resources out there that are free, that are free. We are so quick to Google everything else, but when it comes to mental illnesses and, and disorders, nobody bothers, they just kind of sweep it under the rug. So I think uh, along with you know, you know, having those uncomfortable conversations, asking the right questions, get educated. Um, and, and I know here we're, we're lucky enough to have, you know, NAMI Minnesota, which is National Alliance on, on Mental Illness, um, and they've got tons of it. Um, Minnesota Department of Health, um, I know the counties do as well. Um, so it's, you have to get educated and, and just know, like, like Misha said, ask the right questions. So. 
And just to kind of add on to that, you were saying, how do we get people to recognize that for us? For me, being a radio personality, um, I don't know if I even mentioned, I have a radio show on KFI Radio, and I'm a big like radio interview person, and there's a lot of people now who are, a lot of celebrities, uh, particularly celebrities of color, coming out and talking about mental health. A lot of times, I send my friends interviews from the Breakfast Club. You know, because it's entertaining and they can laugh along with it, but then they can get educated but not really knowing they're educated. And I'll send that to them if it's something that I feel like, remember we were talking about this? Or maybe I feel like that would help them understand me better. So there's so many different resources that's not just what we think about like looking in a book. A lot of times the education is out there, we just maybe don't see it or we pass over it. And that's the kind of beauty now is so many of us coming together and talking about it and people who you think um, don't deal with it the most are the ones who are really dealing with it. So I think, yes. Can I just say one more thing? Mm -hmm. um, if, how, how are we doing for time? Five minutes. That's five minutes. 15 minutes. I just want to, if we could, um, we should just briefly talk about our businesses. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I think that might be a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I think we kind of flanked on that a little bit. Um, I don't know who wants to start. You can just give the mic. Yeah. Go ahead. There you go. That's you. That's all you. <laughs> all right. So like I said, I'm a woman of many hats. Um, full time, I work with Hennepin County um, Child Crisis. So I'm a crisis therapist. I go into the school systems. I go into your home. Um, I deal with a lot of suicidal children. And so I just fill them up with my light. And um, what they like about me is how personable. And I, I, that's why I listen to trap music so I can keep up with them. <laughs> um, that's my full-time job. And then part-time, I have Amani Counseling, Consulting, and Healing Services. Um, right now, I'm located in Savage. Yes, it's far. Um, but I do a lot of dope healing in the community, and it's free. Um, I'm also the Chief Healing Officer with the Zen Bin, which is Sierra's um, business. And we have healing circles every month. That's free. Um, and then I do a lot of speaking engagements, churches, um, youth empowerment. I have Melanin Misses. Some of my Melanin Misses girls are out here. They're selling the nachos in the back. Um, she is our mental health professional for Protect Your Crown. Yes, yes, yes. And so, <laughs> so um, yeah, I think that's it. That's all I do. So I, I make healing. I make healing dope. That's my thing. I, I I'm not gonna be the superficial type of therapist. We're not gonna stay on the the surface. We're gonna go deep. We're gonna go into soul soul stuff. We're gonna go to, into trauma stuff. But I'm not gonna leave you there. And I'm gonna give you tools. And I'm gonna ride that that with you because I I strongly believe in our healing, and I also believe that we can turn pain into power. Yeah. Amen. Hi, my name is uh, Gigi again, and so I'm a public speaker, so I do speaking engagements, uh, mainly for women groups and also for youth. Um, and my speaking engagements really deal with um, finding one's purpose and connecting to the essence of your soul. Um, I also hold uh, monthly workshops and events that are for women mainly, and some I do have that are co-ed. And so in those spaces, it's a space for every individual that comes there to meet their soul, for them to have a very sacred and very intentional space for them to have that meeting space where they connect with the truth of who they are. You know, we, again, we're all about in the world and having different images and different words tell us who we are, which are false. And so those um, sacred spaces are there to actually give you the truth of who you are and be held in that space. A lot of the work that I do is about teaching people to have a sacred relationship with their pain and so have a very different relationship with those quote unquote negative or bad feelings. And so that's one of the areas that I feel is my specialty and also with creating sacred moments in all of your life. So it's not just about, okay, I did my meditation and I'm done, but it's like how to actually weave sacredness into your whole entire life, you know, into those conversations and into your daily, daily life. Um, and I also um, am a writer and I'm leading like a writer's retreat in Bali in March 2020, which is teaching other people who are writers or those who are looking to get into creativity a little bit more on how to actually use their writing um, to be a vessel um, for truth. Um, and that I will pass the mic. Awesome. Here, I'll take your okay. mic and I'll pass you that one. There okay. we go. Got to pass the mics around here. So my name is Essence Jones. I am the creator, founder um, of an organization that I started in 2016 called Protect Your Crown and Insight into Mental Health. We specialize in really just promoting mental 
well-being, um, ending the stigma of mental illness by putting together a lot of different events. We It actually started off for me as a blog with just writing my own truth and, and things that I've encountered. I live with mental illness. I um, suffer from high-functioning anxiety as well as depression. I'm transparent. I'm not, I'm, I never hide that um, because it's a part of my story. But because of that, and ac actually, and it was also um, due to losing to uh, family members uh, to suicide, I just decided that something needed to be done. And so um, the blog kind of turned into, well, you should have discussions around the Twin Cities because there, I, what I was noticing is it was that there were a lot of people who had gone through things that were similar to what I've gone through. And so our story started to become very familiar and connected. And so I decided to do Protect Your Crown. So we've been around since 2016. Um, full time wise, gosh, what do I do? Um, <laughs> I'm a training specialist at the Minneapolis VA, so I've been a part of federal service for 17 years. A lot of people don't know that, but yeah, it's a, it's a long journey for me. Um, I am a mother, um, I am a wife, um, and I am studying at Concordia College for my psychology degree. Um, so yeah, I got a lot, I got a lot going on, but that's kind of me in a nutshell, so. Again, I'm Sierra, um, full time. I run a record label um, and a music festival, so I'm in music. It's very healing for me. So Don't shout out. Uh, Rhyme Sayer, Sound Set, hey. shout it out hey. to it all. Hey. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, I show up there. I'm a divine vessel there. Um, and then I also own the Zen Bin, which is a soulful holistic wellness collective. So we curate um, inclusive safe spaces all over uh, Minnesota, Chicago now, and LA as well. Um, and basically, we're just kind of putting on healing for the culture. So uh, we just make uh, real healing modalities uh, super accessible but also we create an, an experience that allows it to resonate with people on a soul level. So we do a little bit of trap music yoga, hip hop yoga. I teach R&B meditation. Uh, we have meal prep classes. It's just mind, body, soul, holistic, but we do it for the culture. So you're always gonna catch us playing music. You're always gonna see some crazy stuff happening, <laughs> okay? It's a good time. It's a great experience. Come by, for sure. <laughs> and you can follow us on Instagram. I will plug myself at the Zen Pin, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell them what uh, Zen and Juice. Oh, and we have a food business. It's called Zen and Juice. Um, and basically, it's super intuitive. Uh, started out over north seeing kids drink Kool-Aid. So I was like, all right, we got to change that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we created a juice bar um, um, on the north side. And we have the Hip Hop Healing Center coming as well. But basically, uh, we have super, super affordable juices for like fresh press juices. So it's organic ingredients for the low, um, just so the hood can enjoy all that the world has to offer outside of Kool-Aid and GMO products, for sure. I want that purple drink. We're non-GMO these parts, yes. for sure. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. And my juices are good, so you know, we gotta come by. Um, so my name is Shondell Darris. I am the founder of Resiliency. Um, and my organization kind of combats mental health on multiple layer, la levels. Um, so the first level is, of course, I do my community um, spaces, healing spaces. I'm real basic. Um, I, my, even though my friends are very eclectic and they, they have all these wonderful things, I need some normal stuff. Not normal, but I need some basic stuff. So I provide spaces for you guys just to come and vent and talk. Um, provide tools. Uh, it started out just being for women, um, but as I started doing my own healing, because it did start with my own healing, I realized that it was important to have my men heal too, otherwise there will always be an unbalance. Mm -hmm. um, so we also hold spaces for men as well. And then my other level is um, I combat mental health at a systematic level. So I create webinars, trainings, um, tools for organizations, uh, hospitals. I just got done completing um, a three-month training session across Minnesota in the middle of winter teaching <laughs> psychologists and therapists and social workers how to interact with people of color um, because it's important that if we keep telling people to get healed, we, we send them to people who are going to be able to protect them as we're doing that. So that's what I do. All right, so give it up for everyone up here. <laughs> Round of applause. I'm so bad at this. As I briefly mentioned, my name is Miss Margaret. Most people say Miss Margaret Live because it has a ring to it. I kind of like it better too. So I'm Miss Margaret Live. I have a radio show 
called Miss Margaret Live every Friday on KFI Radio. I describe it as a seat at the table for those on the menu. So make sure you tune in. I've had four fifths of this group on the show, so you're gonna be next. See, yeah. era. I want to. I like to say it like that. It makes you think of. See, if this beat is. So thank you all for being a part of our panel, and thank you all for attending.